Today, I'll be demonstrating how to use the new Halo V match and the new Halo W match. Okay, in this portion of the video, I'd like to show how we used to do triples. And we want to do three shells at one time before we had the Halo Ws. And there's a couple ways we did it. The first method we used would be a bucket method. We'd have a chain of like 12 of these. And then you have to count three buckets and you cut it. So I already kind of skipped that stuff here. Have your buckets laid out. And then you get your shells, cut your ends off. But each shell, you have to take your match and you need to expose it. So you have to have your knife. And what I do is I cut each side. Again, this is very time consuming. And I would expose some of my match. And so, usually I have a sharper blade. But I would go ahead and put that match into my bucket, fold it over, tape my bucket, and then I would do the same process, cut, put into a bucket, cut, put into a bucket, um, tape off any exposed ends. I got a running end here, end here so I got to tape this off. And then I would go ahead, at this point I'm ready to put my match in. So then I would put my match in, and this shell is ready to go up in the triple. Uh, but again, this extra material, um, extra steps. And the other problem you have is a lot of times you'll get crossfire because you'll have match exposed over the tubes. Um, again, you gotta cover that in there. I'm just happy that we don't have to use this system anymore now that we have the Halo Ws. Okay, now the next way I'm going to show you how we did triples is not using buckets, but we'll be using just our E-matches here. So we'll use three E-matches, not as cost-effective as I'd like to be, but this is how we do it. So you get the shell, cut the end off. This one doesn't have an applicator on them, so I just pull back so I can expose the E-match. The e Put it inside, fold it over. Double, double, latch. Basically, what I do. Um, you can or cannot tape off the end. I mean, a lot of times we'll tape them off. Um, I think it's best just to have all your black match not exposed. And so, do that again. Housekeeping, we tend to twist these. Now you can take these three shells and you can say, okay, let's take it to the field, drop all three together so they're all in a row, but then you have to go to the next step. And the next step uses a bean gun. Typically, you have to, if you have them all e-matched, you take all shells, drop them in, they go all the way down. Tend to put them in there, shells, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll latch hook each one of these on an individual screw to prevent them from getting any wire whipped. Okay. Demonstration only. So, okay. And then I take the wire and I expose all three of them. What I'll do here is I'll cut it a little short. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this, all these wires right here. We'll discard that. Now I got to take each one of these wires and split them open so I can get to the to the wire. Now I have never personally done this, but you can take these wires and strip them manually by hand so you're exposing the wire itself and twist them together and again you do it over here this will give you the continuous circus circuit that you need to ignite all the shells and then these ends here just put all this together these end here can either go to the slap, again you'd expose the ends, 
and these can go to your slat or these can go to um, more wire to go further however you want to do it but again I don't like to have all these exposed wires they can touch they, they, it just, there's just too many reasons why I don't like it they fall apart they're loose so I don't use that system never have so I will show you how we use it how we've done it again you can see that wire already fell off okay so we'll cut all these off what we use is what's called a bean gun this was used for phone companies and it has a uh, an applicator where you, you squeeze it in and it, and it collapses onto the wire. You don't have to strip the wires to use these. Um, you buy the boxes of the UY2 connectors, which are getting harder to find. So that is another problem with continuing to use these. So again, so I need to connect these. So I will take the wires and I'll get them side by side where they're really close. Put them in the applicator, the bean gun. Being, you can see, you look inside, and you can see they collapsed. Again, this is a process to make sure you do it right. And take your last one. Beans are about 12 cents a piece. So, and then bean that together. You've got a good connection, though. And of course, you can test for continuity to make sure you have good continuity because sometimes the beans aren't, aren't, don't always collapse right. But then you strip these ends here and it's ready to go into your, to your module and you can fire all three shells. A lot of moving pieces. I'm really happy that we have the Halo W now. Okay, well first I have here is I have, I have the V and I have the W. We're going to work on the V first. As you see, this one has the red caps. These caps are designed to work with shells that have this type of applicator on it. This happens to be a Vulcan shell, and it has that applicator. Um, so, if I want to have this match shoot both shells at once, and I'm prepping it, I basically I have the part that goes to my module. This will, this will go to my firing module. And then I have the two match heads, which will go to my two shells to launch both these shells off at the same time. So if I'm prepping these shells, I would simply pull this out, take off the white cap, do the same on this one. I take my match. I typically like to loosen it up, put it inside. There's a little notch there for it to go, go around, and it's secured. Some people want to latch it again. That's fine. You can just put a simple latch hook on it, and you latch it again. And I'll do the same for this side. Again, I loosen them up a little bit. I put them in there. Latch it, get it. And these shells are ready to go. I will now demonstrate how to do the Halo W. Basically, the match comes out like this. You find all three of them, keep them together, and untwist them off this wire there. And then, for housekeeping purposes, I tend to just twist these together. You kind of keep. This is the the protector cap that keeps the the match shunted for safety. And now you have all three here spread out, just like I do here. So what I need to do, because these have the receptacle caps, I'll need to cut all these. You see, I cut one here to show that. And then you open this up, you'll see the black match. Put this along your match, in there, so forth. Fold it, a couple twists, and a latch hook. And that one's ready to go, a little tape on the end. And I will continue that with all three shells. And now we are ready to go put this in our mortar rack. Now, here you'll see I have them laid out how I matched them. This is important. This is an important step. You need to make a mark on the middle one to M, whatever you want with the marker. That way when you put it in your tubes, you know that that one will go in the center tube. Okay, we are ready to put this together and bring it over there and show you how to drop them into the, into the rack. So over here, look at these. Shells in the rack. Remember, I marked the middle one. Again, that's important that you drop that one in the middle. These two on the sides. All the way down. Now, you could do this in the rack, or you could do it the way I did it, prep it beforehand. Um, you could also, if you have, uh, if you have a wider um, 
angle here where you want to go far, you, sometimes you can just leave the match out. That's perfectly fine. Um, if you do four inch uh, racks or three, you probably have to do that for sure. Um, I'll secure the wire for wire whip. This is now ready to go into my module. Um, where I, and then after I check continuity, I would fire. I'll go ahead and just do a continuity here to make sure everything was done right with my ODA tester. And we got a red light. We are good to go. So this would be in the system and we'd be ready to fire.